All right, now we're gonna cover the anatomy of the brain. So have your sheet out again, your terms to know. And first we see we have four main regions of the brain. Three of them we can see without taking the brain apart. But the other one we're gonna have to make a cut in the brain. So this is the brain from the superior view. And the bulk of the brain, this is about the size of a real brain. The bulk of the brain, this compared to my hands, about the same size. The bulk of the brain is going to be the cerebrum, the pink part. Second part is easy to find is the inferior of the cerebrum and posterior is the cerebellum. Then we're going to have the brain stem here in white. And then we're gonna have what's called the diencephalon. Now to see the diencephalon, we're gonna have to take the brain apart. It's in the middle core of the brain. So if I take this brain and I divide it straight down the middle so we have a right and left half, I'm gonna end up like this where they already made the split. Now I'm gonna turn it so we can see the split here. All right, now, this was the cerebrum, pink. Brown was the cerebellum. This is the brain stem. And the diencephalon is this round structure here. It includes 19 and 20 there, and 21, and 22. And I consider it like an egg inside the brain. There's actually two of them because di means two, n means in, and cephalon can mean the head or the brain. So think of it as two eggs in the brain. Right here on top, superior to the brain stem, where the brain stem meets the brain or the bulk of the brain is the diencephalon one there, and the other one would be here on the other half. So we have two cerebral hemispheres, two. We actually also have two cerebellum. This is from the inferior view of the brain. And we have one brain stem two sides, we can still divide it. And then we have two diencephalons. And when we divided that brain, the right and left halves, remember we called it sagittal, a sagittal cut, sagittal halves. There's two big dividing lines in the cerebrum. And we're gonna get the cerebrum now, which is next on your list. The first one is the longitudinal fissure. Fissures are deep, and that actually goes all the way down to about the middle of each hemisphere until it's connected by this corpus callosum here. Corpus callosum is for the right and left hemisphere to communicate with each other. And you can see that longitudinal fissure is gonna go that deep before it's connected to the other hemisphere. This was analogous kind of to the, remember the sagittal suture of the cranial bones? Longitudinal fissure. The other deep fissure called the transverse fissure divides the cerebellum from the cerebrum. It's also deep. Now you see lots of structures on the cerebrum, lots of grooves and lots of protrusions. And those are called gyri and sulci. So all of these ridges here, each one's called a gyrus and plural is gyri. In Latin, I is plural, us is singular, unlike English, where us is plural and I is singular. 
So there's a gyrus. Here is a sulcus. One groove, shallow groove. It's called a sulcus. Multiple called sulci. Now what the gyri and sulci do is they increase the surface area of the brain. And that way we can have more connection between blood vessels and the brain tissue. So we can have more nutrients into the brain, more waste products leave the brain. The blood vessels are tucked down the sulci, they wrap all over the gyri. Protrusions are a good way to increase the surface area of organs, cells, many structures we're going to find out. All right, continuing on the uh, cerebrum, we're going to have four lobes, just like we had four parts of the cranial bones. We actually had six bones making up the cranium, but the four major ones are going to come back to you now because we have a frontal lobe from this pencil line all the way up is the frontal lobe that's where the frontal bone was remember then we have the parietal lobes back here that's where the parietal bones were we had the temporal lobes where the temporal bones were and we even have an occipital lobe where the occipital bone was. So we could really say frontal lobe, parietal lobes, temporal lobes here and on the other side, and occipital lobe. On this colored brain, they have them pretty well distinguished here. There's the frontal, the yellow, both yellows. Blue is more the parietals. This area here, protruding temporal, and then the yellow and green in the back here are the occipitals. You can see a lot of gyri and sulci, longitudinal fissure, transverse fissure. Some of the sulci and gyri do have names. We're gonna only give you the main ones. If you're on your list now, major sulci and gyri, we have the central sulcus. Now the central sulcus is this one where the pencil line is. It simply divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobes. And therefore, if you have a gyrus right in front of the central sulcus. It's called the precentral gyrus. And that's going to be your major motor area. In other words, the neurons in that gyrus are going to be the main ones going to your muscles. Posterior to the central sulcus is the postcentral gyrus. And there's going to be your main sensory gyrus where a lot of the sensations coming in from outside the body senses are going to go to the postcentral gyrus first. This is analogous to the coronal suture of the bones. This is central sulcus. The lateral sulcus is actually here between the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe. And then we also have a parieto occipital sulcus, which is actually hard to see on the outside of the brain, kind of along here. But if we cut that brain open, sagittal view, we can see it nicely here where I colored it in in pencil. Rhino occipital sulcus. Okay, let's go to the second page. A few things about the cerebellum. Here, 
We also have, this is from the inferior view. We also have two um, hemispheres on the cerebellum, right and left, where they're connected. They are this little section down in here. It's called the vermis. We do a sagittal cut there. We'll see what we call the arbor vitae. Now, arbor vitae means tree of life. And where all this white matter is here, it looks like tree branches. That's where they get that. So that's the arbor vitae. Arbor vitae is white matter, and we didn't really say what white matter was yet. White matter is the myelinated axons. The gray matter, which in this case is going to be the brown around the white, that's going to be more of the cell bodies of neurons. And we're going to see that in the brain, too, at some point here. All right, now we go to the brain stem. And what we have for the brain stem, I'll get down here first is we have three parts of the brain stem. We have the medulla, which is connected to the spinal cord down here, goes down the body. Then where it bulges, it's called the pons. Pons means bridge in French, except they call it pont. And then, you barely see it, but where the pons kind of goes up into, can't get a good view, here too good, but I will on the inferior view, right up in here is called the midbrain because that's the part of the brain stem that connects to the true middle of the brain, which is the diencephalon. So let's look at the inferior view here. We can see it better. The inferior view, medulla, pons, the bridge and the bulging bridge that connects to this area here called the midbrain. From the sagittal view, medulla, pons, and there's the midbrain. You can see it nicely right here. Best seen from the sagittal view. Remember, the midbrain connects to the true middle of the brain, which is the diencephalon. Another view of another brain, medulla, pons. Here we can see the midbrain nicely. Wanna see it again? Okay. This is the colored brain cut. Medulla, pons, and there's the midbrain. Now let's cover the diencephalon now. Diencephalon, we have to look at the sagittal view true middle of the brain, two eggs. Now the egg, each egg has three parts. The thalamus is the bulk of the egg. Now hypo means under, so the hypothalamus is this part here, right where 21 is, the hypothalamus. And coming off the hypothalamus is this stalk can barely see it there, called the infundibulum, which connects to the pituitary gland. That's the pituitary gland. That's your main endocrine gland, your main hormonal gland that hangs off the hypothalamus. Then we have an epithalamus. Remember, epi means on. So that would be 26 there on top of the thalamus. On this cut, there's your thalamus egg, there's your hypothalamus, and there's your red epithalamus. A lot of that epithalamus, well, there's two parts of the epithalamus. This bulk of it covering the thalamus is called the choroid plexus. It makes cerebral spinal fluid, special blood vessels that make cerebral spinal fluid. Then back here, this little pink structure, posterior, to the thalamus is called the pineal gland that regulates your sleep awake cycle on this particular model here 
It's supposed to back here. You can see it better. It's number 23. Pineal gland and choroid plexus are part of the epithalamus. Colored brain. Thalamus part. Hypothalamus. Epithalamus, not in red this time, but choroid plexus and pineal gland. Here we can see thalamus egg, hypothalamus with the pituitary gland hanging off of it, and then the epithalamus, the choroid plexus part, and the pineal gland there. Okay, now it looks like we get to a transverse or frontal section of the brain. And I told you I'm going to show you where the gray matter and white matter are. So if we take um, this brain and we do a horizontal transverse cut across it, we would end up with that. Move this one out of the way. And what you can see on these two sections, transverse cuts, are gray matter and white matter. So in the brain, this gray matter is the outer core. It's called the cerebral cortex. And that is the bulk of your memories and decision-making part of your brain. The gray matter, outer cortex, called the cerebral cortex. Some people say that is you. You are your cerebral cortex because that's where, again, you store memories where you make decisions. It's pink here, but it's called gray matter. It's mostly the cell bodies of the neurons. And then deep to that is the white matter, and you can see some lines there. Those are all the axons with myelin around them. So the myelin shows up as white. And this cut too. Now sometimes the gray matter will go down in those sulci, but it's the outer core of the cerebrum and then white matter deep. We have some cranial nerves coming off the brain. I have a lecture on that. We're only going to cover about four of them. There are 12 cranial nerves coming off the brain and brain stem. And the brain stem is part of the brain. Best seen from the inferior view. The first cranial nerve you can see here is called the olfactory. Cranial nerve number one. You can see the Roman numeral one. That's the smelling nerve. And actually the nerves come up through the superior nasal cavity uh, through that cribriform plate. And they connect with this olfactory bulb and tract here. So the tip is the olfactory bulb. And then as it continues, we call it the olfactory tract. We change the name for neurons that are actually on the brain or go into the brain, we call them tracks. Whereas neurons leading to the brain and outside of the brain in the whole body, we call nerves. Nerves are a whole bunch of neurons. Tracks are a whole bunch of neurons, except they're on or in the brain. Olfactory bulb, one on each side. Olfactory tract. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve and optic tract. So here, picture the eyes as being out here. And we can see the optic nerve actually here, the tip of it, that would be um, extending all the way out to the eye. Now, once it reaches the brain, it crosses to the other side. So what you see of your left eye is interpreted by your right brain and vice versa. Optic chiasma, chiasma means cross. And then once they go into the brain after the chiasma, we call it the optic tract. Okay, so optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, cranial nerve two. I'm gonna turn the brain here. So you can see it like this, okay. So we had one olfactory, two optic, three, four, and five. You can maybe see the Roman numerals here, but we have three, four, five. 
And five, we're going to learn, because that's a big one, and it's right on the middle of the ponds. It's called the trigeminal. Trigeminal is a mixed cranial nerve. It's going to receive sensations from your face, from your teeth. And then it's going to also send messages out to your chewing muscles. It's a very important nerve. Brain number five, trigeminal, right in the middle of the ponds, the big one in the ponds. Then we have six, seven, eight, cranial nerve nine, 10, 11, and cranial nerve 12. The other one we're going to learn besides the um, olfactory optic and trigeminal is number 10, right here. And that's important because that's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is the one that goes to all your organs, so it regulates your organs. So be able to identify those four. Look on this model, and I'll go over them again. It's not hard. Olfactory, smelling, optic for seeing, trigeminal, mixed nerve, motor and sensory, going to and from your face. And then the vagus, number 10. I'm not going to ask you any of the others. But you should know there's 12. We cover them in lecture. Now, the brain has what we call ventricles in it. On your sheet, I think we're on the third page now. Third page of your sheet, we have ventricles. Now, ventricles are fluid-filled chambers in the brain. They help make the brain a little lighter. They circulate cerebrospinal fluid in the brain as well. So let's cover the ventricles. We have four ventricles in the brain. And we have a ventricle model. So, this is a ventricle model here. The first two ventricles are called lateral ventricles. And I'm gonna put it like this. And there's one lateral ventricle in each cerebral hemisphere. So you can see. Lateral ventricle, lateral ventricle. So they call those ventricles one and two. See, I'm kind of overlapped here. They curve all the way around like this. That's a lateral ventricle, and we have one on the other side. Those circulate cerebral spinal fluid through the brain, give nutrition to the brain cells. Now, what happens is they merge together in the middle and form this third ventricle there. And then they send a little canal called the cerebral aqueduct here down to the fourth ventricle here. It's kind of like an airplane. No, so we look at it like this, the wings, the lateral ventricles, the body of the plane it would be the third ventricle. We have the cerebral aqueduct, which connects the body to the tail. The fourth ventricle would be the tail of the airplane. Actually, we make paper airplanes. If we did this in the, in the lab and we label the four ventricles, then we have a contest. So you can throw their ventricle airplane the farthest. But there it is. Now, if we took at the sagittal view of the brain, you can kind of appreciate where these are. So let's get the sagittal view here again. Okay. So right up in here would be where a lateral ventricle would be. One in this hemisphere, one in the other one. Third ventricle actually surrounds the thalamus part kind of in between the two thalamus eggs. So it would be right here where the thalamus was, the diencephalon. 
There's your cerebral aqueduct here. And there's your fourth ventricle anterior to the cerebellum. Then it continues as the spinal canal. Let's look at this colored brain here. Get both halves here. This would be where a lateral ventricle would be, right inferior to the corpus callosum. Thalamus, surrounding the thalamus would be the third ventricle. This would be the cerebral aqueduct. And there's your fourth ventricle between the cerebellum and the brainstem. Then we get the spinal canal. All have cerebral spinal fluid. Here, there's your ladder, other lateral ventricle. Third ventricle again, cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle. While I got this colored brain on here, I forgot to mention that. Remember I told you about the central sulcus here? And then we had a pre-central gyrus and a post-central gyrus. So they actually have these labeled here with the precentral gyrus being your main motor cortex, sending nerves to your muscles, and this postcentral gyrus being your main sensory cortex, receiving sensations. We cover a lot of what they do in, in the lecture. So let's see what else we have here. We're going to go look at a few. Uh, mounted specimens now. For this sheep brain dissection here, you're going to go mainly by my um, lab study slides. I have some good pictures of a sheep brain dissection. It's not really a dissection. You basically just cut it in half and then make a sagittal cut. Maybe make a transverse cut to show the gray matter and white matter. But go mainly by that. I have some mounted ones I'll take you over and see. We'll make one stop here because I want you to see, even on these uh, torso models, that you can see some of the brain structures. Here, you can see how it fits right under the cranium here. And you see the blood vessels going down in the sulci and over the gyri. You can see the different lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. Take that out. And even on this part, you can see the cerebellum down here. The arbor vitae, white matter and gray matter. Corpus callosum. But here you see the fourth part of the brain, that diencephalon here, remember the egg? And you can even see the three parts, thalamus, the egg, hypothalamus, with the pituitary hanging off of it here, stalk is the infundibulum. Notice how the pituitary sits down in the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone for protection, because this is your master endocrine gland, which is actually controlled by the brain controlled by the hypothalamus of the brain, but it's tucked right down there into that cella tersica, this Turkish saddle on the butterfly bone, the sphenoid bone. Then we have the epithalamus, which in this case, um, they're showing in pink here. That's the choroid plexus part of the epithalamus, and this is the pineal gland here. You can also see the brainstem three parts nicely. Medulla, pons, and that's the midbrain part of the brainstem. I'll say it again. Connecting to the true middle of the brain, the diencephalon there. People sometimes get the midbrain and diencephalon confused. The midbrain is part of the brainstem that connects to the true middle of the brain, which is the diencephalon, particularly the egg-shaped thalamus. All right, now we'll go over to the mounted specimens to complete this video.
we actually have a, in the lab, we have a real human brain right there. Now that's mounted, uh, you know, upside down. It's actually floating in the fluid there. Gyrite sulci. You can see the cerebellum here. So it's laying on its superior surface, upside down, basically. So if I turn it this way, I can actually see some of the brain spinal cord and the brain stem. Those are the optic nerves you can see up in there. But if you want to see a real one, go into uh, one of your anatomy labs. On a campus, each lab should have a real human brain. I don't know where they got them from. Um, this is a shrunken brain. Once they take it out of the fluid, it'll shrink. I have a nice brain um, dissection um, of a real uh, doctor that did one. I forget her name, but it's really good. And I have that as part of your lecture. I took a brain out of a cancer patient that had died recently. But here, even here, you can see cerebrum, cerebellum, right there, brain stem, and this would be the diencephalon here, the egg, medulla, pons, midbrain of the brain stem, diencephalon with the thalamus part, hypothalamus part, the pituitary would come off here. Epithalamus would be up in here. Pineal is right there. That's your corpus callosum connecting the right and left cerebral hemispheres. There's a lateral ventricle here. This would be the third ventricle around the thalamus. And the fourth ventricle would be right there. Here is the, uh, that's a frontal cut through the brain. And mainly what I want to show you here is you can see the two lateral ventricles, one in each hemisphere. And also on this, you can see the gray matter and white matter. See, it does look gray in real life. See, that's the gray matter, the cerebral cortex, and that's the white matter deeper. See the brain stem nicely, even the three parts, medulla, pons, midbrain. This area here would be where the thalamus eggs are. Here and here, and that's your third ventricle between them, right there. There's your nice long longitudinal fissure, which comes all the way down until it meets the corpus callosum. Remember, the longitudinal fissure is separated right and left cerebral hemisphere, and the corpus callosum connects the right and left cerebral hemisphere, and then the lateral ventricles are right under that. Then the two thalamus eggs right under that, and the third ventricle between them. Then we have our fourth ventricle and our uh, brainstem. There you can see the gray matter, outer gray matter cortex, and the inner white matter very nicely. And the lateral ventricles, so that must be deeper uh, back in the brain. You can see the lateral ventricle is really good there. And you can see that nice arbor vitae of the cerebellum, which has white matter and gray matter around it. Gray matter still on the outer core. Now the sheep brain is not as clear because it is a sheep, but a lot smaller. <laughs>